So I'm going to go over the setup I have for this uh, mass spring system. It's actually a mass spring damper system. So what I'm uh, doing here is like a basic structural dynamics problem. Um, any beginning textbook has this in it. Uh, Myrovich or Craig or uh, whichever you refer to. If uh, you want references, uh, let me know or I can just uh, share the derivation of the equation with you. Uh, so mass attached to ground with a spring and a damper. And so the equation of motion is mass times acceleration. This is a function of time plus damping times velocity. It's a function of time plus stiffness times displacement equals a forcing here. That would be a force being applied here. But in this problem, we're assuming that there's no forcing. So the initial displacement and the initial velocity are what drives the system. Um, so if there's no initial displacement or velocity, there's no motion. Um, the basic equation of motion for the system, and this is the displacement here. You could also derive velocity or acceleration as well. <coughs> the displacement over time is equal to, uh, that's uh, Euler's number, zeta omega nt, and here zeta is this damping times the critical damping, which is the damping that results in zero uh, oscillatory motion. And that's times the initial displacement times cosine of omega d t plus the initial velocity plus zeta omega n times the initial displacement over damped natural frequency. And this is times sine omega d and that's the equation. So natural frequency is the square root of stiffness over mass. And then the damped natural frequency is the natural frequency times 1 minus zeta squared. So that's what I'm trying to implement here. Um, so if I go down here, the first thing I'm trying to do is uh, get the damped natural frequency. So I take the zeta and I take it to the power of 2, so squared, and then I, I subtract that from 1, take the square root and then multiply by this quantity, which is the natural frequency. Now input, I'm inputting the frequency in hertz, hertz here. And to get that into radians per second, this needs to be radians per second. I need to multiply by 2, and then by pi. And uh, Blender's real nice. If you type pi in here, it knows, hey, that's uh, pi. Uh, you could also put tau, and then I wouldn't need to multiply by 2 because it's uh, tau in uh, Blender is uh, 2 times pi. So I'm reading that into here uh, to get the damped natural frequency. And then also I'm taking that natural frequency, multiplying by zeta for a later calculation here. So this is z 
data omega n. Now my time, I think I already went over that. This is basically time. Um, but this time, the the output animation is going to be about four times slower um, than this. Um, so this isn't really a five hertz. It's 2.5 hertz is what, what you're going to see in the animation. Um, so initial position is here. Initial velocity is here. And here I'm building up this uh, second part of the equation here. Um, taking the damped natural frequency, multiplying by time. Here's time. And I'll write it here so we don't get lost. There's time. So this is damped natural frequency times time. That goes into uh, the sine and cosine functions. So I'm getting this quantity, sine uh, omega dt, and then cosine omega dt here. So the cosine term is multiplied by the initial displacement. So this is mu naught cosine omega dt. So that's the first part here. We got that. Uh, the second part, I have omega d coming in here. So here's omega d. I have uh, zeta omega n coming in here, and then t coming in here. So this is zeta omega n t. And then I'm multiplying by negative 1, and then uh, Putting that in the exponent uh, with the power, and here's Euler's number again. Um, so the quantity that comes out of here is e to the minus theta omega n t. So that's this part of the equation. Now I just need to multiply these quantities and add them together, and then multiply by the quantity that we just calculated. Um, so here I have u naught times zeta omega n. So this is u naught zeta omega n. And then the initial velocity here, those are added and then divided by omega d and then multiplied by sine omega dt. So what comes out of here is initial velocity plus zeta omega n times the initial displacement divided by the damp the damped natural frequency um, times sine omega dt. So those two are added and then they're multiplied by e to the minus zeta omega n t. And so this quantity coming out of here, I hope you can see that that's uh, what we're calculating uh, as the motion of the system. So here I'm using that as my z uh, motion. So nothing in x or y, that's z. And then that's going into the offset of an icosphere. Uh, using the set position node. And then I do a subdivision surface and shade smooth just to make the icosphere look nice and smooth and add a material to it. And that goes in to the joint geometry. Um, don't want to do that. Sorry, I'm trying to cut the line. I always hit the wrong one there. So if I remove this part um, on the bottom here, uh, I just have the ball. And if we run the animation, it's just a ball going up and down. So what I wanted to do was to have some spring on the bottom. And how I did that was I took this displacement, uh, added one to it, 
and then put that in as the height of the spiral. So the height is starting at one, and then the set position, I'm subtracting one in the z direction. I'll show you why in a minute. And then I add a curve, uh, circle, uh, that's the profile curve and the curve to mesh, and then setting a material, and that makes the spring on the bottom. Now, I'm adding one, <clears throat> because if I set this to zero, it's going to be way down there. Sorry. And then if I add, uh, set this position to zero, it's going to be starting from the same location that the ball started at, the mass. So that's the zero position. So that needs to be minus one in order to get the base of the spiral um, to be down there at the ground because the ball's um, up at one. So that's basically it. I duplicated that a few times um, so that I have different uh, balls. And then I changed the frequency and the damping for each of them. Uh, I may have changed the initial velocity too, but I think the initial positions are all zero. If I go to time zero, yeah, it looks like they're all they're all starting off at the same height. So they all start off at zero position. Um, and that's basically it. If uh, uh, you have any questions, let me know.